I want to get this guy, he's the max. If I want to get this guy, he's the min. What about this guy? What about the guy that's second or third, etc.? Analytics can help with that as well. Let's watch the video. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax. In this session, we'll look at more on window boundaries. Let's do a quick recap on what we covered in the last video. We looked at where the boundaries were using the first value and last value functions. So we had a simple example of United Kingdom life expectancies. Here's some raw data, and we wanted to find out some information about first and last values. So we did first value of age, and as you can see, we were looking at an interval range of five years either side. So if I was on 1st of January 2004, then based on that window as defined above, we would look five years either side, and we can see for the 1st of January 1999, the age value was 77.38, and that's what yielded our value alongside January 2004. Similarly, for the last value in the range, we looked down to 2009, found 80.18, and that became our last value. So that was first and last value. Since 11.2, we can extend that to have the concept of an nth value. Now, what's the significance of an nth value? Often, we don't want the very extreme values in a window. We might want the second lowest value, or perhaps the third highest value, not necessarily the value at the very extreme of a window. There's a statistical importance to this. If you look up our order statistics on Wiki, you can see that when you've got a sample of data like we have, see I've just picked some random numbers, from time to time, it's actually more beneficial to eliminate the outlying values and then use the result to do some sampling. And that's where nth value might be able to come in useful. Let's look at our requirement for today. We're gonna to compare daily Uber trips in New York City with the second lowest and second highest values for July through to September. And of course, because it came from a manager, we want that ASAP. Here's our raw data. We've got data from July 14 all the way through to September, and that's the number of Uber trips done in New York City. Once again, we'll build up an analytic function using our template. We're using nth value this time, and you can see that it takes two parameters. It takes the column we're interested in, plus how far from the boundary we're going. So we're looking for the second lowest in this case. We don't need a partitioning clause, we're sorting by the trip count, and we want it across the entire data set. So our windowing clause is unbounded preceding and unbounded following. It doesn't matter what row we're on, we're looking from every row before it and every row that follows it. Let's plug that expression into our SQL, and there we go. We have a column called low two, and you can see its value across the entire set is 11,443. Where did that come from? Here's our range between unbounded preceding and unbounded following. So look at every single row in the table. We can actually see from the small set of data we've got there that the lowest value was 10,890 on 5th of July. The second lowest value in the entire table was actually the one below it, 11,443. And because that's the second lowest value, that's the one that becomes populated for our low two column. Once we've got that, we could easily do a percent comparison by using that nth value within an expression. So I've taken the trip count on line five and divided it into the nth value expression we had on the previous screen. And you can see there's a percent comparison for trip count for a day compared to the second lowest value. So how do we get the second highest value using the nth value syntax? It's very easy. There's our original syntax for the second lowest. All we do is we add from last into the nth value expression. And that tells us to count two back from the top as opposed to two from the bottom. The rest of it is unchanged. We can plug that into our SQL, and now we have the second highest value. And you can see by scanning down through the data there that the highest value was 13th of September, and the second highest was on the 5th of September of 42,319, and that's what gave us our high two column. You can run these scripts for yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we'll look at how Windows deal with the problem of nulls in the window range. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget, to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.